It's medicosis perfect natus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. In the previous video, we had an introduction to the cardiovascular system. Today, we'll focus on the cardiac electrical conduction system. Who is the initiator? SA node. And then the SA node is going to give the impulses first to the atria. Here's right atrium, here's left atrium. And then give it to the AV node. AV node's job is to give it to the ventricles. How does this happen? First, you have to go here. This is called the bundle of his and then right bundle branch and left bundle branch, right for the right ventricle and left for the left ventricle. After the bundle branches, you have the Purkinje fibers. And that's why we call this the his Purkinje system. Hey, medicosis, if I cut your heart out of your chest, what's going to happen to your heart? It's going to continue to pump. Even after cutting the nerves? Yes, the heart doesn't need nerve. The heart has automaticity. The heart can start its own impulses. But of course, after my heart is out of my chest for like five minutes or so, it will stop because there is no oxygen coming to it. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Let's try to answer the question of the previous video. When it comes to the adult circulation, please choose the correct answer. Is it A, B, C, D, E or F? Please pause. And the answer is E. Portal vein carries deoxygenated blood. Hepatic vein also deoxygenated. Hepatic artery oxygenated. Pulmonary artery, now that's an exception. This is an artery that carries deoxygenated blood. Pulmonary vein is also an exception. It's a vein, but it carries oxygenated blood. Let's start with the basics. The heart has automaticity. The heart doesn't need any help from outsiders. The heart can start its own impulses from its own sinoatrial node. It's in the atrium, of course. The sinoatrial node will give the impulses to left atrium and right atrium and to the AV node. It's called atrioventricular node because it lies between the atria and the ventricles. Describe the SA node and AV node. They are specialized muscle fibers that act as if they are nerves. They are not nerves, but they are very close. Who's the initiator? SA node. SA node, give to atria and then give to the AV node. After the AV node, we have to wait in the AV node because it's very slow. We have a delay here. Why delay? To allow the ventricles to fill during diastole and to allow the coronary arteries to fill during diastole. The AV nodal delay is huge. Don't say, oh, the AV node is so lazy. Oh, why do I have to wait so much? Shut up. If you don't wait, you'll die. After I waited in the AV node called AV nodal delay, I'll give the impulse to the bundle of his and then right bundle branch and left bundle branch. Right bundle branch will have Purkinje fibers to the right ventricle. Similarly, left bundle branch will give Purkinje fibers to the left ventricle. Who's the pacemaker of the heart? SA node. Where is the delay? In the AV node. How long is the delay? 100 milliseconds. Oh, that's not much. Well, when it comes to impulses, this is like eternity. SA node, atria, AV node, bundle of his, right bundle branch and left bundle branch to the right ventricle and left ventricle in Purkinje fibers. We call this the his Purkinje system. Your lovely SA node will fire about 60 times per minute. And this is your heart rate. So the heart rate is how many heartbeats per minute do you have? And this is determined by how many times did the SA node fire in one minute? If mine fires 60 per minute, my heart rate is 60 beats per minute. If yours fires 100 beats per minute, that's your heart rate. What's the function of the nerves that are connected to the heart? Well, sympathetic can speed it up above 100. Parasympathetic can slow it down below 60. But they are not initiators. They are just regulators. Who's the initiator? SA note. Who are the regulators? Sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic will speed the heart up. Parasympathetic will slow it down. Sympathetic, of course, this is thoracolumbar specifically from T1 to T4. Thoracic number one, two, three, and four. Parasympathetic, this is the vagus. Of course, it comes from your brain. This is craniosacral, if you remember. So vagus comes from my brain, specifically from the medulla oblongata, part of the brainstem, that is. 
What's the name of the receptor waiting for the sympathetic nervous system? Beta, and it's waiting to receive norepinephrine. What's the name of the receptor waiting for the vagus? M2, M4 muscarinic, and this is waiting for acetylcholine. So let's compare between the two, sympathetic versus parasympathetic. Generally, sympathetic is thoracolumbar, parasympathetic is craniosacral. Specifically to the heart, sympathetic is T1 through T4, parasympathetic is the vagus from the brainstem. Neurotransmitter, sympathetic secretes norepinephrine, parasympathetic secretes acetylcholine. The receptor on the heart waiting for you. If you're sympathetic, beta 1. If you're parasympathetic, M2. Medicosis pearls for the pros. Your heart has automaticity, right? Yeah, by the SA node and AV node. How about sympathetic and parasympathetic? No, they are regulators. They are not the initiator. Okay. Also, your gut has automaticity. It's called the enteric nervous system, and it consists of the myenteric plexus for motility and the submucosal for secretions. How about sympathetic and parasympathetic? Well, they can speed it up or slow it down, but the gut is automatic. Now let's talk about Nexus. The sponsor of the video, shut up. The phone maker, also shut the front door. What Nexus are you talking about? The gap junction. What the flip is that? The gap junction or Nexus are connections between your cardiac muscle fibers. So here's the deal. As you know, cardiac muscles are branching. If you remember, cardiac muscle fibers branch like this. And between the branches, you have what? Intercalated discs. Are they obliterated? No, they have a gap in between. We call this the gap junction or nexus. So this cell can communicate with the cell via gap junction or nexus. Why is this important? Because you do not have to initiate the impulse in each individual muscle fiber. You can just initiate the impulse to the first, and then the first will give it to the second via gap junction, the second will give it to the third via gap junction. This happens very quickly, allowing both your atria to contract at the same time. Moreover, both your ventricles will also contract simultaneously. Why is this? Thanks to your gap junction. This gap junction contains proteins known as connexins. The gap junction allows the flow of the nerve impulse and of calcium, because calcium is the hero of contraction of your cardiac muscles. That's why your right atrium beats in synchrony with the left atrium, and the right ventricle beats at the same time as the left ventricle. These are cardiac muscle fibers, they are branched, they have intercalated discs that contain gap junction or nexus. What's the name of the protein here? Connexin. What's the function? To allow all of the muscle fibers to contract together as one unit. We call this syncytium in synchrony. By the way, when you say to your friend, hey friend, I just uploaded a file to Dropbox for you and I'm waiting for it to sync. What does sync stand for? Synchronize. Do you know where did this word come from? I've no idea. The word chrono means time. And the word sin means the same. So synchronize is the ability of you and your friend to access the same file at the same time. And this is where the word syncytium comes from. All of your ventricles contract together at the same time as one unit. I have a separate video titled Skeletal Muscles versus Cardiac Muscles versus Smooth Muscles. If you remember, cardiac muscles are striated, branching, involuntary, uninucleated, automatic. They have automaticity thanks to the SA node. They have troponin. They have lots of gap junction or nexus or connections. And of course, cardiac muscles are in your heart. No duh. Two types of cardiac action potential. If you look at the muscles of the atria and the ventricles, they follow this shape of action potential. But if you just look at the nodal tissue, which is the SA node and the AV node, they follow this pattern of nerve impulses. Do you remember the action potential of nerve fibers? It is very similar. Still, depolarization means activation. Repolarization means 
inactivation. Depolarization is by sodium influx, but here it's by calcium influx. Calcium is also positive, if you remember. Repolarization is by potassium efflux. The details of this and this are beyond the scope of this video, but you can find them in my cardiac pharmacology course on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. You can download it today. So you went to your kitchen and turned the lights on. My question is, what happened first? Electricity first or light first? Of course, electricity has to come first and then the electrical filament will emit light. Electricity first followed by light. Similarly, in your heart, electricity comes first. SA node, AV node, Hesperkinji system, all of this crazy stuff. Then your muscles will actually contract. This is very important. When your muscles actually contract, it's called systole. When your muscles are relaxed, it's called diastole. And of course, we have atrial systole and ventricular systole. The atria contracted. Of course, both atria contract at the same time. Remember? Syncytium. Both ventricles also contract at the same time. So right ventricle and left ventricle together. But this happens after the atria have finished their contraction. So first, both atria contract together. And then we have to wait in the AV node. Remember the delay. Then both ventricles will contract together. So the right atrium and left atrium contract together. But these atria do not contract at the same time as the ventricles because we have to pause at the AV node. Why pause? To allow the ventricles to fill with blood that just came from the atria because when the atrium contracts, it gives blood to the ventricle, so the ventricle should relax and receive that blood. And then after this, atria will relax, ventricles will contract to eject the blood. Left ventricle will eject it into the aorta, right ventricle will eject it into the pulmonary artery. So we have atrial systole and atrial diastole, ventricular systole and ventricular diastole. When atrial systole is taking place, the ventricles are in diastole. Conversely, when ventricles are in systole, the atria are in diastole. If you have ever put a real stethoscope on your chest, you have heard lup dup, lup dup, lup dup. What's that? These are your heart sounds. We have two heart sounds, normally speaking. S1, S2. Lub, dub, lub, dub, lub, dub. Between S1 and S2, there is your ventricular systole. We care more about the ventricle. The ventricle is bigger. The ventricle is more important. So between S1 and S2, we're talking about ventricular systole. Between S2 and the following S1, this is called ventricular diastole. Lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. What just happened between lub and dub? Ventricles have contracted and ejected blood. Left ventricle has ejected blood into the aorta. The right ventricle has pumped blood into the pulmonary arch. Okay. Dub and the next lub. What just happened here? Ventricles have relaxed and received blood from the atria. Left ventricle received from the left atrium, right ventricle received from the right atrium. What is S1? Not the space between S1 and S2. I'm just talking about S1 as a point in time. Well, S1 is the sound of doors closing. How about S2? Also doors are closing. When you slam the doors shut, you will hear the heart sound. The difference between S1 and S2 is different doors closing. S1 is the closure of the mitral valve and tricuspid valve. If you remember, mitral valve is between the left atrium and the left ventricle. Tricuspid valve is between the right atrium and the right ventricle. Why do I need to slam them shut before ventricular contraction? Because you want to prevent the blood flowing from the left ventricle back to the atrium. We don't want this to happen. We want the left ventricle to give the blood to the aorta, not back to the left atrium. It should not go this way. So before the left ventricle ejects the blood, you should close the mitral valve. And before the right ventricle ejects its blood, you should close the tricuspid valve. This closure, bang, creates a sound known as S1. When you shut the door, you hear a sound. When you open the door, you do not hear any slamming sound. The slamming is the heart sound. How about S2? This is the slamming, the closure of the aortic valve and pulmonic valve. Why are we doing this? Because during diastole, the ventricles relax and they receive blood from the AG. But I do not want blood to fall again from the pulmonary artery to the right ventricle 
or from the aorta to the left ventricle. It should not go this way. It should only go this way, forwards, not backwards. So before diastole, I should close aortic and pulmonic valves. Notice that systole is shorter than diastole. Why is diastole so long? For two reasons. To allow your ventricles time to fill with blood. Moreover, don't forget that the coronary arteries, the arteries that supply the heart itself, fill during diastole. That's why diastole should be long. Who caused this? The AV nodal delay. Why is this important? To let your ventricles fill with blood. To let your coronary arteries fill with blood. If diastole was super duper short, you're increasing your risk of a heart attack because your coronary arteries are not filling properly. They are not providing your cardiac muscles with oxygen and nutrients properly. Therefore, you can get a heart attack called ischemia. No blood going to the heart. But hey, medicosis, why do my coronary arteries fill during diastole? Why not systole? Because during systole, the ventricles are contracted, right? Yes. When they are contracted, the muscles are squeezing themselves, correct? That's true. The coronary arteries are here. If they try to fill during systole, they will fail because the muscles are squeezing and constricting your coronary arteries. They can only fill during diastole when the ventricles are relaxed, allowing space for the blood to flow inside those coronary arteries and supply your cardiac muscles. How can you tell that factory X is better than factory Y based on the factory's output? How can you tell that your heart is better than mine based on the cardiac output. What the flip is that? This is the volume successfully ejected from the ventricle every minute. And this depends on how fast and how strong your heart is beating. Of course, if your heart is contracting faster than mine and stronger than mine, you will eject more blood than mine and you will have a higher cardiac output. Normally, let's say that heart rate is 100 beats per minute and the stroke volume is 50 mLs per beat. So what's the cardiac output? Well, if I eject 50 mLs per beat and I'm beating 100 times, 100 times 50 equals 5,000. 5,000 what? mLs per minute. Heart rate is beats per minute. Stroke volume is ml per beat. Cancel the beat with the beat, you will end up with a cardiac output that is measured in mLs per minute. And the normal cardiac output is 5 mLs per minute, which happens to equal 5 liters every minute. In other words, your left ventricle alone ejects 5 liter per minute into the aorta. Moreover, your right ventricle alone ejects also 5 liters per minute into the pulmonary artery. If you like this video, you will adore my cardiac pharmacology course on my website medicosisperfectionetics.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionetics, where medicine makes perfect sense.